Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So in this video, I wanted to cover which MacBook might be right for you. So we have a bunch of them here. There is one model that we do not have, and that is the 13 inch MacBook Pro. Now that's one model I don't actually recommend, and I'll explain why later on in the video. But yeah, we have the M1 MacBook Air, we have the M2 MacBook Air, we have the 14 inch MacBook Pro, and we have the 16 inch MacBook Pro. I don't even have enough space on this desk to fit them all. But yeah, I wanted to cover them and make sure you choose the right one for your needs. So we're going to start with the M1 MacBook Air and the M2 MacBook Air. So I've used both of these quite a lot, quite extensively actually, for various different things, especially when I'm traveling, using at home, using at the office. So I know what they're capable of and I know what they're not capable of. The base model M1 MacBook Air, I think is actually the best value out of all these machines. It starts at 999 and you can actually get it cheaper if you look at other places or if you got it refurbished you can get it lower than the 999 that it goes for. It's definitely perfect for students or just people who don't need a machine that's super powerful. Maybe they're using it for word processing, uh, work browsing the web, just other sort of basic tasks like that. It can handle the odd intensive task here and there. So it can handle photo editing, video editing. If you need it to in a pinch, I've done it myself. I've edited Lightroom photos. I've edited videos for YouTube on this. I've edited videos for Instagram, TikTok. Yeah, it can do all that, no problem. The only thing is it's not a machine that I feel like you should get if that's the sort of thing you're going to be doing every single day because there will be times where maybe it's just not quick enough or maybe the render times just aren't fast enough. Like I said, I think for basic tasks like word processing, browsing the web, apps like Notion, email, uh, other sort of just not very super intensive sort of apps, this will handle it completely fine. It also has up to 18 hours of battery life under normal usage, which is incredible. And it actually lives up to that. If you're using it for browsing the web, watching videos, stuff like that, it will last 18 hours, no problem. It's a claim that Apple have made that it actually lives up to and sometimes even excels. I think one big misconception people have with the M1 MacBook Air is that because it's the base model, because it's not one of the Pro machines, they think it won't be able to handle the work, the sort of load that they put at it. But I think you'd be surprised because even I was surprised, especially when I was editing 4K video and editing photos in Lightroom, you know, it handled those things when I needed it to, no problem. Like I said though, it's not something I'd do every single day on it. I think it's something that I would recommend trying out, seeing if it does fit your workflow, because I think a lot of people will be surprised at how much power the M1 chip, the base M1 chip actually has. If you're someone who does design work in apps like Figma or web development work, this is definitely more than powerful enough. This is exactly the type of work I've also done in this machine. The only thing I would probably recommend is upgrading the unified memory. As standard, it comes with eight gigabytes. I'll definitely recommend upgrading to 16 gigabytes if you can. I think having that upgraded unified memory just makes it a lot easier to have a lot more apps running at once. Now the M2 MacBook Air can of course do everything that the M1 MacBook Air can. The only thing is of course, it has the M2 chip, so it is a bit more powerful. It can do a few more intensive things, but the actual power difference isn't huge. I don't think a lot of people are going to notice unless they're doing more intensive tasks. One main difference between the M2 chip and the M1 chip is that the M2 chip has a 10 core GPU rather than a seven core GPU in the M1 MacBook Air. That GPU will of course make it easier to do more sort of graphical GPU intensive stuff. And of course the M2 MacBook Air has an all new design that follows the 14 inch MacBook Pro and the 16 inch MacBook Pro, which I'm not going to deny makes it look really sleek. It makes it look a lot more modern looking. I'm a huge fan of the M2 Air design and I personally think it's the best looking laptop Apple make. However, if you're on a budget, I don't think it's worth spending that extra $200 getting the M2 MacBook Air over the M1 MacBook Air. I think it's only really worth it if you really want the new design and if you really want the M2 chip. But if you're on a budget and you want to spend the least amount of money possible, the M1 MacBook Air is definitely the one to choose. I also think regardless of which one you choose, these M series of chips, the M1, the M2, they are so, so good. They're going to last years. I could definitely see the M1 MacBook Air lasting a good two, three, four, maybe even five years from now and not really feeling that slow for things like web browsing and sort of basic tasks like that. It really is such a great chip. No matter which Mac you are getting, one service that I use on every single Mac that I own is Setup, who are also sponsoring this video. Setup gets you access to a variety of premium apps with its carefully created options. With its powerful search function, you can look for an app for almost any use case. They have apps covering many categories, including things like note-taking, 
Calendar, Finance, Writing, Design, Mac Hacks, Developer Tools, and many others. Their Mac and iOS app selection is made to cover as many use cases as possible, powering you up in everything that you're professionally using your devices for. Once subscribed, you get access to hundreds of premium apps and tools, and they keep adding more on a regular basis, maintaining the highest possible quality. My favorites include Better Touch Tool, which lets you create custom actions and shortcuts, one switch, which lets you access quick shortcuts such as hiding desktop icons, keeping your Mac awake and hiding windows. Clean Shot X, which gives you more flexibility when it comes to screenshots and screen recordings. You can try Setup for free for seven days by using my link in the description below. And after that, it's $9.99. And it's actually one of the things that I think is well worth it because I'm subscribed to it myself and I think it's incredible value. So make sure to check it out. Now on to the Pro models. So there are three Pro models. There is the 13 inch MacBook Pro, there is the 14 inch MacBook Pro and there is the 16 inch MacBook Pro. However, I would not recommend the 13 inch MacBook Pro. And that's mainly because the 13 inch MacBook Pro, even though it has the same chip as the M2 MacBook Air, the problem with it is that it's still using the older design and it also has the touch bar. Absolutely hate the touch bar. Only reason to choose the 13 inch MacBook Pro is if you don't need the power of the 14 inch or the 16 inch, you want the M2 chip, which is completely fine for you you want better battery life and you want a bit more sort of better performance because it obviously has a fan in it as well. That's the only reason to consider it, but I think it's not really worth considering. I, I, I just don't think it's worth the money. I think you're better off either choosing the standard M2 MacBook Air or just jumping up to the 14 inch MacBook Pro. So the 14 inch MacBook Pro is the one that I use day to day. This is the one that basically just runs everything for me. This is my workhorse. I wanted a pro level machine, but in the smallest form factor as possible, as I take it between home and the office a lot, I need it to be light and small. Screen size and battery life also don't matter to me that much as I have it connected to an external display 99% of the time, which also powers the machine. I put this machine through its absolute paces, editing high-end 4K video like the one you're watching now, and lots of photo editing in Lightroom. I usually have more than 10 apps open at once as I don't want to keep quitting and opening them, yet it runs like an absolute champ. I have no issues with it. It does everything I need it to. It renders my videos really quickly. It renders my photos really quickly. I have so many apps going, it's just, Amazing, absolutely amazing machine and probably the best MacBook I've ever bought. These two machines, the 14 inch and the 16 inch are definitely targeted at people who are going to use the GPU and the CPU more. People who are doing a lot more intense stuff like video editing, photo editing, graphical work, rendering work, things like that. Things that are really going to be intensive on the CPU and GPU. This 16 inch model I actually bought for my editor. And the main reason why I chose the 16 inch for him over the 14 inch is because he is going to be editing video on the go more the bigger battery is more important as well, the bigger screen is more important. So he's not going to always be connected up to an external display. When he's in the studio, in this environment, sure, he will have it connected to a display, but when we travel together, when we're doing video work together, I won't actually be carrying this, I'll probably be carrying my M2 MacBook Air, and he will be carrying this, he'll be doing all of the video editing and photo editing on here. And that's why we got the 16 inch model for him. The other benefit of these two Pro models is that they come with the ProMotion display as well, so 120 hertz on both displays, and the displays on these two machines are absolutely phenomenal. They're definitely some of the best displays you can get right now. The only gripe I have with them is that they're not OLED, but then if they were OLED, I don't think they would get as bright either. I think the main benefit of the 16 inch model is the bigger battery in it. And because it's bigger, it does have a larger surface area for cooling. So technically, under very, very heavy workloads, the 16 inch model actually performs better than the 14 inch model because the 14 inch model has to work the fans harder to get the CPU and the GPU cooler. So yeah, if you're someone who's doing super intensive work, needs the bigger screen, needs the bigger battery, is likely to do work more on the go, then the 16 inch model definitely makes more sense. When it comes to pricing for each of these models, the M1 MacBook Air starts at 999, the M2 MacBook Air is at 1199, the 14 inch MacBook Pro is 1999, and the 16 inch MacBook Pro is 2499. So yeah, the price does vary a lot. For $500 more, when it comes to a 16 inch model, I think it's actually quite good value. For $500 more, you get a bigger battery, you get a bigger screen, you get technically better thermal performance. That's pretty good value, I think. I think the 14 inch MacBook Pro starting at $19.99, again, is also really good value. The base model at $19.99, it can do so much. Like it's actually amazing, especially for someone who works in a professional field, video editing, photo editing, uh, any sort of graphical work or anything like that, for 1999, 
I think it's incredible, incredible value. But for sure, the ultimate value king here is the M1 MacBook Pro. If you're someone, like I said, who's doing basic tasks like web browsing, word processing, working in Notion, Slack, and things like that, someone who doesn't require intense sort of video graphical work or anything like that, the M1 MacBook Air is just such a, such a good machine. But if you do need more performance, if you do need better screens, better battery life, these models, the 14 inch and 16 inch are such good value that I feel like you can't go wrong there either. It all depends on what you upgrade when it comes to sort of memory and SSD and stuff like that. But the base models alone for each of these models are so good. If you are currently a MacBook owner, please let me know what MacBook you're using right now and what you're using it for. I'm always interested to hear what people are using their machines for because I know a lot of you guys are doing all sorts of different types of work. You're not necessarily doing photo and video editing. So yeah, please leave a comment below. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.